We've talked about inverse square law fields, but another type of field that's very important is the one you get from magnetic field, a circular sort of field, which actually also obeys the inverse square law. So if we have a wire with a current running up it, if you remember we have field lines that run something like this in circles around it, which is the magnetic field. Now the equation for this is the Biot-Savart law. So if you have a little bit of wire with a current I running up it and length delta L, then we can work out the magnetic field caused by this little length. And it's given by the equation So what's going on here? Well, we've called this delta B rather than B. Delta just means a little bit of magnetic field because having a wire of just a short length of the current going through it is actually a totally unrealistic situation. The electricity has to go somewhere. You can't have that. So any real circumstance, this wire is going to be part of a much longer wire. There must be other bits going on somewhere else above and below. And that also means any real magnetic field is going to be the sum of the magnetic fields due to all these little bits. This is just telling us the little bit of magnetic field produced by this little bit of wire over there, a little bit of current. Uh, but because electricity needs to go in a circle, it's actually a physically impossible situation. What's the equation looking like? Well, it's actually rather similar to the inverse square law things we've been talking about. You've got a constant, you've got 1 over mod r squared, the difference is you've got delta L cross the unit vector R. So what does that look like? Well, we've got our little bit of current up here. with some current going through it here. And let's say we're trying to measure the magnetic field at some different point there. So here's our R vector. So delta L. Um, to work out which way the magnetic field goes, use the right hand rule. So if we imagine sticking our thumb up and then our fingers curling around like this, that tells us as the fingers go in this direction, the magnetic field must go in this direction. The other way to think of it is whenever you have a cross product, you have delta L cross R, what you do to work out the direction of the magnetic field is to curl your fingers from the first thing in the cross product to the second thing in the cross product. So the first thing is the delta L which points in this direction upwards, and the second thing is the R. So to go from one to the other, you need your hand something like this. So as the fingers curl from this direction to that direction, that means the magnetic field is going like that. So either way works. How do you actually compute it? Well, we work out mod r the same way we did last time, which is take all the x's here and the y's and z's and the x, y's and z there and square them, add them together and take the square root. So that equals, just as before, We also know that the unit vector in this direction, so r hat, is just the total vector in that direction divided by the length of the total vector, as before. So we can rewrite the Biot-Savart law as delta b equals mu naught over 4 pi i delta L cross R, I mean, now it's the full vector R, not just the unit vector in that direction, and to compensate for that, the mod R at the bottom has to be cubed rather than just squared. So that's how you calculate it. You need to know the initial vector, the initial position, the final position. So this is a position of the little element of wire. 
that's the position we're trying to measure the field at. You work out r as the coordinates here minus the coordinates there. You work out mod r as per this equation over here. Then plug them all in and you work out the magnetic field.